All right, so this is a suggestion. The name of the video is uh, What Will the James Webb Space Telescope Find? Um, before we jump into this video, um, I want to explain a couple of things, guys. I am, without a doubt, a space geek, right? I follow the Hubble, Tess, Kepler, Spitzer pretty closely anyway, right? Um, without you guys even knowing that, I think, you know, so this is interesting that I get this suggestion here. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely infatuated with the concept of all of this, right? You know, uh, James Webb with the huge, like, gold looking, but I think it's actually a uh, beryllium a mirror, right? Um, on it, and it's it's stunning. It's like it's like three stories tall, and like the size of like a tennis court, and you know this type of thing. And like the heat shields are just amazing on it, and all types of things, guys. So we should actually be getting, you know, and oh, and it's going to be like um, in a sense orbiting um, the sun. I think it is. Maybe I think I think it's orbiting the sun, um, and not so much the Earth. So the Earth doesn't interfere with the actual imaging of the uh, the camera and the sensor. So like we should be getting actually super super amazing images from this just purely based off of how it's built right um you know also the um it'll have the uh what is it it'll have the capability to actually see like what 100 to 200 years after the big bang so like this is, this is literally a time machine guys right <clears throat> interesting um though my my basic hopes for james webb is to actually see um, like the upper atmosphere of like maybe Kepler forty uh, four fifty two B. I am obsessed with this um, this exoplanet here, guys. Absolutely obsessed with it. Um, just I just want to see what it looks like closer, guys. <laughs> right? I want to see close images of the Horsehead Nebula, even closer than Hubble has allowed us to. Right? Um, but yeah, like so. These are basically my hopes and dreams for it. I know that, that the new launch date is in November, so with hopes that it actually launches in November, so we can start getting data. Um, I know that's going to take about three, three to four weeks to actually start up, right? Because they're actually folding it all up, and it's when it launches, it's going to um, going to take a uh, take about three to four weeks to actually uh, like unfold <laughs> from its uh, you know housing, basically. Um, so hopefully in December, January, we should start getting data, and I just cannot wait, guys, because I'm telling you right now, the day that this is released and the data starts flowing, and it starts being declassified in a sense, right? Oh, guys, I'm, I'm going to be gone for like a week. I apologize, guys. <laughs> I need data, right? All right, dudes, listen. Um, so let's go ahead and just jump into this. Uh, let's see what this is about. This is coming from the channel uh, Perception. Um, they, they look to be very new on YouTube, so definitely you should go check them out if you like this type of content. Um, definitely check them out, guys, right? And um, let's go ahead and jump into it. Let's see what you got In first the beginning, today, guys. our universe was very hot and dense. As yeah. the universe cooled down, the electrons interacted with the nuclei, forming the first atoms. A few hundred million years later, the first stars and eventually galaxies appeared. But how did they form? This thing will help mm. us understand. A oh, James Webb is going to tell us, guys. We're going to find out the, the mysteries of the universe. A billion dollar time machine, which has been in development for over 20 years. Let's get it. Ah. <laughs> the glorious James Webb. Imagine that you are 65. Huge, massive beryllium Five plane. million light years away from Earth, somewhere in the Virgo cluster. And you have a right. very powerful telescope, which you can use to study the Earth. Taking a look through the telescope, you would be able to see what dinosaurs looked like on our planet. Of course, we will face many obstacles along the way. But we are talking about an incredibly powerful telescope, right? The James oh, yeah. Webb Space Telescope is exactly that. It a time machine, guys. We have built a time machine. It is 100 times more powerful than the Hubble Telescope. Just look at the comparison of the sizes of their primary mirrors. Hold on, guys. Hold on, guys. But I, we're not going to disrespect the Hubble because you understand the Hubble the, you know we get it it's smaller and and you know it doesn't see it's not as good you know it's antiquated technology we're aware but the Hubble has given us so many beautiful images um, to, to study and so much data right that under no circumstance should we be like just being like eh, the Hubble no the Hubble come on all right um, but yeah, obviously James Webb is like you know a million times better in a you know, modern at least. Let's go. And yet, James Webb's mirror is 113 kilograms, 249 lighter. pounds lighter. The telescope yeah. works in the infrared spectrum, 
The infrared radiation can penetrate the dust cloud and allow us to see the stars forming within. Additionally, Einstein's theory of relativity states that the space between objects in our universe expands, and so does light. As the uh -huh. light from the first stars and galaxies travels in our direction, its waves lengthen and the light becomes infrared, also known as red shift. Every time you look up at the night sky, just know that there are many stars and galaxies, the light of which see. stretched and became invisible or too faint for you to see. So yeah. here's a question. How is the James Webb Space Telescope supposed to detect that light? It will be a because of the sensor guys listen i'm a photographer professionally and like um trust me like i've always wanted to kind of jump into like uh like astrophotography and i know you have to do so many like like specific modifications to cameras or get specific cameras that are like sh like red shifted or like um uh, you can actually send your camera to some to some like companies and they'll send it back to you right but they're going to heavily modify your camera to the point where you're no longer going to be able to use it to photograph like regular things because its only purpose now is to look at the sky, right? Um, it literally cuts through atmospheric uh, interference in a sense. It, it cuts through, as he said, dust clouds. It cuts through everything. So if you're going to put something like this into space, it obviously has all of this technology built into it. I think Nikon has a really good one. I think it was called the, uh, the Nikon D... Uh, Maybe the D700E, I think is what it's called. Either way, guys, let's go. I'm, I am have no idea the, the sensor because I don't think that's available for us uh, to know, but um, I'll find out. ...assisted by a huge mirror, which will increase the amount of collected light. The more light, the more detailed the image. The mirror is made with 18 hexagonal segments, each one 1.32 meters, 4.3 feet in diameter. This shape will enable the crew to fold the mirror on Earth and unfold it in space. Then, the focus of the mirror will be calibrated by shifting the various segments with an accuracy of 1 to 10,000, 1 10,000th of the thickness of a human hair. The light is collected onto the secondary mirror, then it is reflected and sent to the scientific tools. After it is filtered, it is then focused on the hypersensitive infrared detectors at which point the photons are converted into electrical voltage. The actual telescope is equipped with four tools. NERCAM is the telescope's primary imager in the near-infrared range. Ten sensitive detectors allow it to detect the light of the first stars and galaxies. In addition, NERCAM is equipped with chronographs. And what are they? Imagine that you're blocking the sun with your hand. By blocking the bright light, you can see the road ahead of you. A chronograph follows a similar principle. This function will allow researchers to see more faintly lit stars, galaxies, and even take photos of exoplanets. But NIRCAM cannot show us everything we need to know about the physical exactly. properties of a planet. Is there water? Air? Impossible to say. Therefore, another tool called NIRSPEC will be working with the same range. By studying the spectrum of light emitted by an object, we can tell its mass, temperature, yeah, like a barcode, and chemical composition. The atoms and molecules of an object leave their mark on the spectrum in the form of black lines. But to analyze the faintest light, the telescope has to stare at the object for over a hundred hours, which is ages. But surely the scientists did not spend 10 years working in vain. To avoid wasting the telescope resources on a single object, the near spec is equipped with a superpower to provide spectroscopies of hundreds of objects at once which was achieved by developing a new technology called Micro Shutter System. This system is made of 250,000 shutters that open and close. If you ever observed the night sky in a town or city and compared it to what... And honestly, it's interesting because... Exactly. This is kind of one of the reasons why I refuse to go to like full-blown mirrorless cameras because I'm still... I still like the concept of my shutters on, on my cameras, guys. I don't know. Um, everyone's like, go to mirrorless, it's smaller. No, I'm not going to mirrorless, dudes. I'm not. Not yet, at least. I don't know. Maybe one day, but, but I prefer not to. If you can Never. see at night in the countryside, you could probably tell the difference. It happens yeah, due uh, to the high volume obviously. of light in the city. Therefore, mm -hmm. The light pollution is crazy in the city. The guys. micro shutter system will block the irrelevant light, allowing us to see the most faintly lit object. The light is then dispersed into the spectrum and sent to the detectors. How much light is there in outer space? A huge amount. And in order to capture only the relevant light, the telescope has to be constantly directed at different targets. This will be possible with the help. And also, to my knowledge, it's not 
when it's going to be actually um, deployed. I don't think it's going to be look like how the, how it's placed on the screen here. Um, to my knowledge, it's going to be to the side because the um, the actual heat shields itself are going to be shielding the sun, right? Um, so yeah, keep that in mind. It's not. Gonna, I don't think it looks like this, right? It's more like on the side, right? Help of the fine guidance sensor, FGS. Additionally, scientists from the Canadian Space Agency developed the Near Infrared Imager and Stiltless Spectrograph, which also takes pictures and captures spectroscopies in near infrared light. But how do we deal with thick dust clouds that obstruct the view? Near infrared light might not be able to penetrate them. And that's where the last tool comes in. MIRI is also equipped with a camera and a spectrograph, but it works in a different range of infrared light one with longer waves, which can penetrate the thick dust clouds. Its sensitive detectors will allow us to observe the red-shifted light of distant galaxies, newly forming stars and comet. The issue with MIRI is that unless this tool is cooled to 6.7 Kelvin or negative 266.5 Celsius, it starts capturing its own heat. So scientists developed an addition. And that's another reason why kind of what I was saying here, like the heat shield itself is, is kind of on the side. And also there's another reason why they're pulling it away from Earth, right? Because Earth itself is uh, apparently letting off some type of heat. So I know that it's going to be following our rotation, right? Um, and not the suns in a sense, right? But um, it, but it's going to be really far from us. That, that's really, it's the, I think that's what I'm trying to explain. The James Webb is going to be closer to the sun than to the earth but it's going to be following our rotation you know what i mean um but far enough away so our earth's heat does not affect this because apparently it's super super sensitive additional cooling system and that's also the reason why there's so many heat shields and it's going to be literally directed towards the sun completely 100 percent blocking the sun from the actual um telescope called cryo cooler in essence it's a sophisticated refrigerator in which helium will travel along pipes, cooling Miri to the right temperature as a result. But now we have a different problem. The sun, the moon and earth radiating heat. And as a solution for this problem, the engineers developed an incredible passive <clears throat> cooling system for the telescope, the sun shield. The size of this shield is 21 meters long and 14 meters across. The shield is made up of five layers, with space in between each layer of material so they can cool efficiently. Each layer is made from a special film that can withstand very high temperatures. This material is called captain. In addition, each layer is coated in aluminum, and the first two have an additional coat of doped silicone in order to be able to withstand even higher temperatures. For the sun shield to be able to hide the telescope from the sun, the moon, and Earth simultaneously, the JWST has to be 1.5 million kilometers away from Earth. As a reference, the Hubble Space Telescope was only yeah, it's right on 500. Us. Yeah, I think it's. I think the Hubble is sitting in low orbit around around our planet. 47 kilometers. The James Webb Space Telescope will travel to a special location known as Laragi Point 2. It is one of the five places in the solar system where gravitational forces allow the objects to remain in a fixed position relative to Earth. Remember how we talked about a folding mirror? Similarly, right. the sun shield and many mm. other components will be foldable. This way, the scientists can fold the telescope and pack it into the rocket Ariane 5, which is the most reliable rocket. I think um, this design is uh, from Europe. Um, for the rocket itself, I think the rocket is uh, of European design. Capable of delivering the telescope into space. And now, let's talk about the most exciting thing, the possibilities of the James Webb Space Telescope. We yes, already mentioned this. its ability to capture faint infrared light emitted by the first stars in galaxies. Right. So, what's next? Well, for example, you could spot the heat signature of a bumblebee at a distance of the moon with the JWST. Exactly. <laughs> Bro, that is... Um, uh... Yeah, like I knew that information already, right? But like, um, just to like actually see it visualized in a sense, right? That's crazy, guys, right? You can spot the heat signature of a bumblebee on the moon. All right, so just, just if there is life, we're going to find it now, guys. <laughs> but why should you care about a bumblebee? Did you know that Saturn is not the only planet with rings? Uranus, Neptune, and Jupiter... 
Uranus. have them too. It's just that in the visible spectrum, their rings yeah. are dark and indistinct. Using the transit method in the infrared range, the telescope will be able... Guys, oh my... I think Mars in like a in like what five hundred thousand years or something or five hundred million years is er, they're gonna have um, what's it called um, they're gonna have rings guys I think Mars is gonna eventually has like start like they're gonna have rings I think they're gonna like crash into the moon or something they're gonna crash into something big and it's gonna break up and then then Mars is gonna have rings all right just to give you some some weird information let's get it well to help us understand how the rings around these four planets formed. Well, what about a detailed analysis of an exoplanet's atmosphere? The researchers mm -hmm. are interested in the planets located in the habitable zone, which means right. they might contain water. By using the telescope, we can learn the chemical composition of those planets' atmospheres. Scientist Machio Kaku thinks that the chances of encountering an alien civilization are quite strong. The telescope yeah. will be able to... You're, we're gonna, I'm telling you, James, this is why I'm so excited for James Webb, right? Um, we are going to answer questions. There are going to be a people on this planet who are going to be like angry. Like honestly, there are going to be people on this planet who are who are so adverse to who uh, they're going to be so adverse to discovery in this way, right? It's going to be crazy, guys. But, like, I'm just super excited to actually get the information. I, I want to dig into some of the data. Um, I want to know, like, like what some of these planets are comprised of, right? I want to know if the planet is a diamond, <laughs> basically. You get what I mean? I just want to know. I just need data, guys. But to tell us more about the birth of galaxies, stars, and planets. Right. It may completely change science as we know it. Yeah. Everything that we know could... Change. The universe keeps many secrets, but the James Webb Space Telescope should help us uncover these mysteries. Oh, and yeah, in the meantime, oh, yeah. we will continue to delight you with new content. All right, all right, guys. Yeah, listen. Uh, I think it was a uh, you know, love, very good, uh, um, but very well presented. Let's say, right? Um, no complaints, guys. So, so yeah, if you if you like this type of content, make sure you go check out his content um, on the channel. Uh, I'll link it in, in the. Um, the pinned comment and um yeah dudes james webb are you guys excited let me know in the comments if you guys are excited for this or as excited as i am because i'm well i don't know you may not be maybe right maybe um but all right dudes now listen now let me know in the, um, in the comments also if you would like for me to see any more of this type of science related content i'm always good for that guys um anything outer space science medical don't matter let's 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 have conversations about things all right, and um, you guys all have an amazing day and enjoy it thoroughly.